Good afternoon. I'm Carol Christ. I'm the director of the Center for Studies in Higher Education. I'm delighted to welcome you here for our program this afternoon. We're so lucky to have Pamela Brown here. Pamela Brown is a triple Berkeley product. Uh, she <laughs> got Third her. Third time's a charm. <laughs> her bachelor's degree here in mathematics, yes, right? Yes, exactly. And then uh, she got a master's of public policy, and she worked on the Berkeley campus uh, for, I think, 16 years. Yes. Am I right about that? And um, Pamela then caught the eye, as um, some wonderful people do, of the office of the president. And so she then um, went to the office of the president to become the, um, the, the vice president for institutional research and planning. Um, I've gotten to know Pamela a little bit since I've come back to campus, and I've been so impressed with how smart she is, how much she sees data at the service of important questions that we all want to answer. It's such a treat that she's agreed to come here and talk to us today on the accountability report, this great volume that the Office of the President uh, publishes every year. I've now read it from cover to cover. It is full of interesting <laughs> stuff. I'm the clamp and <laughs> now. <laughs> and I'm really delighted that she's agreed to talk with us um, about it today. Oh, that's great. Well, thank you. Go, reading it cover to cover, you had a lot of coffee, didn't you? <laughs> no, a long plane flight. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, uh -huh, yeah, I see. You had nowhere to go. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, thanks very much. I, uh, I'm ecstatic to be here and back on the Berkeley campus. Watch this. This I'm going to start with. That looks really good. Um, it's lovely to be here, and what a great day. It's nice for you to come inside because it looks really pretty outside. Uh, and um, uh, I, uh, as Carol said, worked on the Berkeley campus 16 years. I see some of my uh, former f colleagues and uh, current friends uh, in the group. And I have a few folks from my office as well that um, have come down. Uh, and um, so this is a, a great opportunity for us to get together. When I left and went to the office of the president, I was given a lot of Darth Vader-like uh, things, you see. So I, I just wanted to let you know that I come from the dark side, but we're going green. We're all organic there. So, <laughs> so uh, this is this is great to be here. My uh, my goal for today is uh, to be able to talk to you about a couple products that we have. You know, having worked in institutional research for so long, and and at Berkeley. Um, Going to the office of the president, I, I was trying to figure out uh, the space where I think we can really add value and not duplicate the work that's done on campus. And I think campus IR folks, many of you are in here, uh, are really good about knowing the students that you work with, the academic programs that you've got, and uh, really being able to dive in and support academic and institutional leadership on the campus. And so um, the space that I think we can really provide support at a system-wide level is uh, to manage some of the reporting to get that off your hands, uh, and then um, to provide advocacy and support transparency efforts. And so wherever we can deal with things that come from the state or the feds or be able to talk about the system as a whole and the kind of contributions it provides to the state of California and beyond, um, I think that's really important. And leveraging our institutional data to be able to do that, I think, is absolutely critical. And so today I get to show you a couple of the products that my team puts together. Uh, we're going to go over the accountability report. That should take about four and a half hours. And then we'll talk. Uh, no, and then we'll show you the information center, which is a different way to do it. Uh, I think with all of these, you, you think about the audience that you're working with. And certain products work in different ways. And so these are two that we've definitely got out there. Um, so I will start off and uh, talk about the accountability report. And while Charlie's up in front, he barely got to sit down. I'm going to have him pass some of these out. Uh, this is a full copy of the report and some of the executive summaries that are there. Uh, and then you can kind of flip through and see some of this. And what I'll do is I'll show you, I'll talk to you and give you some of the highlights from the report this year. Uh, this is a report that we've put together. Um, it's uh, one of the cornerstone projects that we've got for our transparency efforts. It's our eighth edition of putting it out. Uh, it's something that we present to the regents on an annual basis, and uh, it's something that we leverage a lot when we have uh, conversations with the um, 
with the legislature and other groups. It's kind of, I called it an almanac. Before I uh, took the job at um, the Office of the President, I was on a plane ride too, and I read through the entire report uh, as well. So clearly this is what United Airlines should now include in all their <laughs> flights. Uh, but it was uh, a great opportunity. I, you know, I knew quite a bit about the Berkeley campus, but this um, really goes over the operations of the University of California as a whole. And each of the campuses are so different. And then there are the labs and the medical centers. And uh, this provides us a way to really kind of demonstrate that and uh, use the data, which I thank the campuses for providing, because that's where we get it. So, so it's really good. So um, what's gone around is a, a copy of the full report. And then um, it's intimidating uh, when you look at it. It's, it's a, a lengthy document. And so when uh, I started a couple years ago, one of the things that I wanted to do was to put together uh, an executive summary, a standalone document, which really kind of tells the story at a high level, pulls some of the key measures that we've got um, out of the report, but something that I thought would be easier for people to consume uh, and a way that I might be able to get some of the legislators to, to take a look at it. The big document, I think, works with legislative staff, that helps on, on that piece, but, but this one is a, a piece where I, I thought that that would be a way where we could kind of get people to know the overall story and then go in and dive into the full report. Uh, all this information is available on the web, so we'll go through and um, show you how you can get it, uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about the Info Center. So that's my plot for the day. Um, all right. So the highlights that I'm going to give you today are going to focus on some of the things that I shared with the regents, and some of those are legislators, um, at the uh, July meeting. And uh, one of our thoughts this year was to really pull out some of the indicators that we have that highlight the contributions that the University of California provides the state of California. We often do it in uh, a lot of different ways. This way, we wanted to pull it together and think about our mission of teaching, research, and public service and then show you with some of the measures that we have where we really stand out. And there's a lot of information in here, so it's always we're missing pieces when we do this. But this was our, our hope, was by talking about some of the measures on teaching, we could really illustrate to um, uh, the uh, primarily the legislators in the room, but the, the role that we play in promoting social mobility and producing graduates that meet the state's workforce needs. Uh, and then when we talked about research, we wanted to highlight uh, how this uh, strengthens our economy by bringing in uh, dollars to the state of California that uh, otherwise wouldn't be here, and by conducting research that is on critical issues that really affect some of the things that the state is grappling with. Uh, and then um, our public research programs, which are numerous. Um, they spread all across the state of California, far beyond our 10 campus locations, uh, which I thought was really critical for us to be able to illustrate. Um, because I think when they think about us in comparison to the Cal State University system, which has a number of other campuses, um, this is one of the ways that we really want to be able to demonstrate the spread that we've got across the state and that um, it's got significant uh, impact far beyond uh, those campus locations. So the first thing that we focused on when we talked about uh, our teaching mission and the, particularly the focus that we have with undergraduate students was to think about um, the contributions that we make, particularly some of the students that we end up serving. And what this shows is this is the proportion of students that are first generation students. They're among the first in their family to be able to go to college. And when we look at that for the University of California, uh, we're over 40%. And uh, we can compare that to other very selective public institutions or private institutions, which are about 36 and 25% for um, public and private. Uh, and it shows that we make a pretty significant contribution in bringing people into the um, higher education uh, environment. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have a significant proportion of our students that are Pell Grant recipients. Uh, that's generally coming from uh, families with incomes less than $50,000. Uh, and um, when we look at uh, other American Association of Universities, which are our peer institutions when we think about them, uh, for the University of California. When we look at it for public institutions and private institutions, we, we dwarf them when it comes to the proportion that are there. 42% of our students uh, are Pell Grant recipients compared to 22% for public institutions and 16% for privates in the American Association of Universities. 
So significant um, access for those students. Uh, in this case, and with this audience, we also pulled in some measures uh, where we looked at the Cal State University system. We don't usually do that within the report, but we have other reporting that we're required to do, uh, including some performance measure reports. Uh, and so we were able to get some data for the Cal State system. So uh, they're at 46%, a little bit higher. Um, but w it shows the role that both of these public um, systems provide uh, in uh, get granting access to, to low-income students. Uh, and that's pretty significant. In addition to the system-wide numbers that we've got there, we have five campuses, and the, the data in the report go into campus detail in, in many cases. Five uh, individual campuses that on their own enroll more Pell Grant recipients than the entire Ivy League combined. Um, and so that's, that's pretty significant. Those are Davis, Riverside, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Irvine. So when we look at our ability to kind of move the dial and promote social mobility, we do it on a scale that is significant when we think about access to those kinds of institutions. So it's definitely one of our points of pride. Um, this one, which has got a lot on it, uh, is focusing on graduation rates for freshman entrants. And our goal in this piece is to show not only are we providing these students access, but we're quite successful in getting them to graduate, and we're continuing to make improvements here. Um, so what this shows is it shows four-year uh, and six-year graduation rates over time. Uh, this is the um, entering cohort, so from the uh, fall 1997 cohort to 2007. Uh, it's for the University of California, and again, our AAU peers, public and private. And then we included data in on the Cal State University system so that you can see some of the differences that are here. Now, um, we did this overall. Uh, this year, we added in information on Pell Grant recipients so we could see the graduation rates there as well. We have more data for our institutions and some universities are, you're required to provide this information. It was easier for us to get it on the Cal State University system for a few years. But it lays out a lot of different messages that are here, right? Some which I don't need to say. <laughs> but uh, one of the things is when we look at the UC system, um, we've seen improvements over time, particularly at the four-year rate. Right? Over this time period, it's gone up 15 points from about 45% up to 60%. Um, and there, uh, we've had a little bit of tapering off. Uh, there is a concerted effort, many of you probably have heard, uh, to um, focus on a variety of different strategies uh, across the UC system to uh, continue to look for ways that we can um, help make improvements in this area. So there's work to be done, and uh, there's work going on. Um, and so we're, we're looking to see what those trends look like over time. Uh, in comparison to other institutions at the four-year rate, uh, we're uh, a little bit higher than our AAU publics at 55%. Um, the AU privates are up at 82%, and we saw some of the differences with the student bodies when we talked about the Ivy Leagues and other uh, private institutions. And then when we look at the Cal State University system, 16% of their students graduate in uh, four years. Uh, when we go to the um, uh, six-year rate, uh, you know, we've had some slight improvements over time. We're up at 83%. Uh, and then you can see some of the comparisons that are there uh, with the other groups. The Cal State University system uh, gets up to about 52% at that point in time. Um, but one of the things in putting the data out there on the Pell Grant recipients, which is really important, we think, is that um, while there's a gap in graduation rates at the six year, uh, at four years, uh, when we get up to six years, it almost goes away. And so. Uh, these students may take a little bit longer, but they are graduating um, at rates that are quite high and higher than other institutions uh, within the state of California. And that's really important because when we talk about promoting social mobility, it's not just providing people access, but it's having them succeed here and then graduate. Uh, and what we found with the data that we've got is when we look at these Pell Grant recipients that do graduate, within five years of graduation, they end up earning more than their families did. So it's a, a measure for sure that we can point to that demonstrates that we're, we're having an impact on it. And when we again think about the scale, the number of students that we're serving, uh, that's significant when we think about uh, improving the economy and the, um, the outcomes for our students. So that's really key for us. 
The other piece that we wanted to highlight with the regents uh, and, um, again, the legislators was uh, the contributions that we provide when we look at the degrees that are awarded. And what this chart shows us is it's a comparison of uh, degrees in the state that are um, uh, STEM related in various fields and uh, the, con the proportion that the University of California provides compared to the Cal State University system and then other private institutions in the state. And this one, when we put it together in the um, performance indicators report, and now we've woven it into the uh, accountability report, was something that was a little bit surprising for us. Because when we think about the number of uh, uh, campuses that we've got in comparison to the Cal State University system, we're actually providing uh, about the same number, slightly more um, STEM degrees uh, in the state than um, the Cal State system is. And particularly in fields of life sciences and physical sciences, about 60% of our uh, undergraduate majors or our total majors, that's undergraduate and graduate together, um, are in the life sciences, are, are awarded through the University of California. Uh, around 55% for physical sciences and around 40% for engineering and computer sciences. So as we think of, about California's economy and as it becomes more dependent on technology-related industries, the role that the University of California provides in creating um, graduates that end up serving in those fields um, is pretty significant. So uh, those are some of the key highlights. I'm ending with uh, an image that we've got here, and this talks a little bit about how we're trying to use the data with some of the outreach efforts that we've got. Uh, this image is part of our uh, UC outreach efforts called the Power of Public. Um, it's an effort for us to go out and illustrate the contributions that we provide to the state, uh, both from our teaching, research, and public service missions, and um, how we benefit the state in tangible ways, and also maintain our identity as a public institution. And so there are going to be a series of images that will show you where we're playing with words about the, the public role that we've got. And in this case, we talk about public works, and we're leveraging that concept to show that, um, or to frame the, the fact point that we've got, that 70% of our graduates within a couple of years uh, graduate and then work within the state of California. And that's in fields that span, and there's uh, some graphics in there. We'll show you some uh, in the Info Center. We span industries of education, manufacturing, business, other fields that are there. So um, pretty significant to providing support in the state, and our, our folks generally stay here. Uh, shifting over to the research side, we're now um, focusing on uh, public transit as our, our concept that we are looking at. Um, and with that, what we wanted to be able to highlight here is uh, the role that the UC pr provides uh, for the California economy in attracting both dollars and talent into the state of California. And that uh, not only do we do that, but we create discoveries that really make a difference. I don't know if anybody remembers this uh, image that's here. Um, but this is uh, research that was conducted on the Berkeley campus. Uh, it's an exoskeleton. Uh, and it allows people who have um, ha suffered from paralysis to be able to walk again. Uh, and one of those individuals that was able to use it was a, a student on the campus, Austin Whitney. Uh, and he was able to walk across the stage at his graduation um, using this device uh, that was created. Um, and so when we got to share that with the regions, you know, it's a story that demonstrates some of the specific things that we do in a way where when we talk about number of inventions or the dollars that are awarded, you know, that combination I think really helps talk about the kind of impact that we have. Um, so this is key, and when we think about public transit, one of the things that we think about is the, the constant moving that we've got and the contributions that we make every day there are five new inventions that come from the University of California and the work that we end up doing. Uh, and um, we're bringing in a lot of uh, resources to the state. So $4.3 billion are spent within the state on research activities. Majority of that is coming from outside the state of California. Uh, we have over 12,500 active patents. And since, watch this, 1976, uh, more than 840 startups were created with UC patents, and uh, about 85% of those are in the state of California. So real significant contributions when we think about our research enterprise and the role that it ends up playing. 
Uh, in addition, and uh, there was uh, some uh, stories that went on uh, today about work that was done down in Southern California where UC was bringing together researchers across the state to talk about carbon neutrality and the role that that plays, and the governor was involved in those pieces. It's an effort that the president's definitely focused on, on trying to demonstrate the role that the UC can play in tackling some of the critical issues that California is facing through the research that we're conducting. Uh, in this case, what we were showing is the dollars that we're bringing in uh, and spending uh, that are focused on carbon neutrality goals, which is uh, something that we've got within the system uh, that we are working on. And uh, this research is in areas of renewable energy, looking at alternatives to natural gas, energy efficiency. Uh, it spans the gamut. It also spans the uh, disciplines that we have. I mean, often many of these things focus on STEM-related fields. But some of the research that's being conducted here is in arts and humanities and social sciences. And it's an effort to focus on ways that when we get discoveries that we've got that are going to help us focus on how to be carbon neutral, how we communicate that with different communities um, and ways that we can do that that make it successful. And so that's some of the research that we've got that are going on. Uh, and an example of uh, um, the way that we're trying to use data to talk about how we can help um, affect some of the work that's going on. The other piece here, and when we look at research activities, uh, it relates to our health enterprises. Um, and in the last year, we had over 2,800 clinical trial projects that were underway. Uh, when we look at this concept here of public defender, um, what we're focusing on are um, some of the research discoveries that we've had in the health-related field, like with uh, the creation of this hepatitis B vaccine, um, which has saved millions of lives and helped millions more. Uh, it's another way where we can um, leverage some specific examples to talk about the role that we play. And our, our health um, uh, operations are, are significant for the state of California. We operate the largest health science instructional program in the nation. And uh, we educate half of the medical students and residents in the state of California through UC. Um, we operate five medical centers there at Davis, Irvine, UCLA, San Diego, and San Francisco. And together, they um, comprise the fourth largest health care delivery system in the state. Uh, and when we think about the workload that they, uh, these um, UC medical centers provide, uh, in the last year, we had more than 159,000 inpatient admissions, 334,000 emergency room visits, and then 4.2 million outpatient visits. And it's not just the scale that's important, but the patients that we care for, uh, almost 60% of them are covered by Medi-Cal, Medicare, or they're uninsured. Uh, so again, it's research that we're doing, uh, and it's providing a significant public service um, that we've got uh, and an important contribution to the state. Uh, we have five major trauma centers. Uh, they provide half of the state's organ transplants and a quarter of the extensive burn care um, in California. And so that resource is really critical because when health issues come up in the state, the state of California has a resource that they can go to. And when we had the Ebola scare, um, the University of California was designated as the state's Ebola health care centers in the state of California. So all of this, again, is for us to be able to try to uh, talk about ways that um, by meeting our teaching, research, and public service miss mission, we're providing significant contributions to the state. A puppy picture. Come on. <laughs> so this is uh, public service. This was one of the ways that we were talking about the thousands of programs that we've got, some on the Berkeley campus. This one here is an image of a program that goes on at UC Davis. It's a student-run mobile clinic. Uh, and this is set up to care for animals of um, homeless individuals. Uh, and so again, you know, we have many of those. In fact, our optometry clinic does um, similar things where they'll go out into the community and provide services. Um, the way that we've been doing this, uh, which is a, a challenge and maybe a little harder to see, but you can see it in the um, material that's going around, is uh, we're using maps as a way to demonstrate the spread of activities that we have. Uh, and we know that these are conservative numbers, but when we look at what this is, this is a section of the state for 
California. Uh, the circles on the chart illustrate where we have campus locations, and the dots illustrate uh, the spread of activities that we've got, uh, along with um, the people that we employ and the alumni, alumni that we have. So we, when we think about the Ag and Natural Resource Centers, we've got nine research and extension centers across the state and 57 cooperative extension offices in uh, almost every county. Um, natural reserve systems, uh, 39 sites and uh, more than 750,000 acres, uh, our nutrition, our health, our teacher preparation. Uh, there are just thousands and thousands of programs. So we always present this as being illustrative and there's a, a in there that shows the, the state of California and just a spread. Um, and that's the goal. We know that this isn't even counting what we actually have, but by doing this, it's, it's really a way for us to talk about um, uh, what we've got. Now watch, this is where I go to the web and I cross my fingers, because you never know. Um, so what I want to be able to do here is to show you uh, how we're providing this information. Um, this is our public-facing website. It's for the University of California as a whole. It's a place where people can go when they want to get information about admissions or the latest news stories for the state. Uh, it's a place where you can get links to each of the individual campuses. Uh, and then down at the bottom here, we have a link to the accountability report. So this is where you can always go in to get this uh, information, all of which is being passed around, is available here on the website. Uh, and it goes through with all the chapters that we've got, and you can get a link to the executive summary. The table of contents gives you a sense of the spread of what we provide. So information on uh, undergraduate admissions and enrollment, affordability and success, information on our graduate programs, our faculty and our staff. Uh, we have information about uh, diversity of our population, so our um, faculty, students, and staff. Uh, teaching and learning, so the, um, some of the examples of how we're providing uh, instruction. Um, and then uh, our research activities. And then we get down to public service, the health enterprises, uh, university finances and private giving, capital programs, uh, honors, and then we have a lovely, which I'm sure, Carol, you enjoyed, the like, data methodology section with definitions. It's, it's thrilling. It's good stuff. So all of that information is available. So when people say that we're not transparent, we point them here. And then we say, what do you want to know? And let's start here, and then we'll see what we're not answering from there. So there's a lot of it, and the president is like excited about this. She's like... Who says we can't find anything about UC? I'll show them, so uh, which is great. Uh, the full reports can be downloaded off of the web, so you can do that. And then we've got old reports that are in there. So it's a wealth of information uh, across the system. And uh, it's been a pretty successful way for us to demonstrate transparency, but also provide a source that everyone can go to. And we can talk some of the same initial numbers, and then we can dive into it and work with our campus colleagues to do that. Um, one of the things that is a, a, a challenge with um, these pieces is that uh, you know when you have a report like that, uh, you're stuck to what the data is on the page, right? And so you can usually answer an initial question, but then people will have more that they want to get answers to. Um, and so one of the things that we wanted to be able to do, again, thinking about different audiences and what we what ways that we can communicate is we've created an interactive website uh, called the Information Center. Um, and this is another way that we're providing some of the same information for us uh, to um, create a space where people can learn and explore more. So we provide top level uh, data and then you can go in and filter it by campus or by different kinds of um, students. The way that we've constructed the data um, is that we have these tables over here on the right hand side. Um, which basically are, as they sound, tables. Uh, we have dashboards that are more visual in nature, um, so data visualizations. And then we have um, these, uh, what we call storyboards under this Understanding UC section, which is basically a collection of dashboards where we have a key takeaway for what we think are critical issues re regarding issues of affordability or um, social mobility or contributions to the state. Uh, and all of this, again, is a way to be able to, um, to get uh, you know, information out about the contributions that we make. 
Uh, we've set this up in a way where you can filter out uh, some of the things that you want to be able to see and then just see the content related to particular subject areas. So for example, here we've got pieces that focus on the undergraduate experience. And you can see we have data on admissions and enrollment and degrees awarded, uh, splashing in pools, it, no, social mobility. Um, diversity of our undergraduate population, STEM degree pipelines. I've got a friend in the back who is uh, interested in that. Um, some of our UQs data, our undergraduate student experience survey data, all at the system level. Uh, and um, some of our outreach efforts that we have. So there are ways that we're trying to make this better. It's uh, in process. This came out in March, so we're very open for feedback on content. Um, we also provide links to uh, some other sources that might be useful. Um, our quick facts piece that has the, the primary statistics that we use about the system. Uh, in, links to fact sheets, which are another way where we provide uh, information where we need to have a leave behind. Uh, so it uh, ranges a series of different topics, including honors and awards. So you can see Berkeley, the number one public institution, and um, how our institutions rank uh, across um, national and international rankings. And then um, we also have links to uh, some legislative maps. And if I have a moment, I will show you that. But what I'll do is I'll quickly show you a couple of the pieces. This has been quite um, successful for us. We've had over 45,000 visits to the site since we've had it up. So it's, a, it's an active place. We work with our communications team so that when they send out press releases on different topics, we're like, we'll explore more about this topic or that. Um, so it's a way that we're trying to engage people in um, looking at um, uh, information about the system. Uh, this is by far our most popular thing. It's a table. Uh, and it has information on applications, admits, and enrolls by uh, California High School. And then we also have it by California Community College. By far the most visited site by parents, counselors, uh, prospective students, and alumni. I checked mine just to see how it's looking. Uh, and you can get this data um, for the system and uh, for each of the campuses. So um, it's been a significant workload relief for a lot of our campuses and uh, a lot of my staff uh, that have to do um, this kind of reporting for uh, one-offs that come in. Uh, and there's a, a data that goes from uh, 2014 back to 1994. So you, you can look at how things have changed over time. Uh, we've started to expand information, so you can take a look at the average GPA of these students and uh, other things about race and ethnicity. As we continue to get more requests for these kinds of uh, data that are useful, we think about um, uh, this is one tool for us to be able to share that. So that is by far what's visited the most. Uh, the next that we've got here, um, and this is uh, dashboards that we've created that focus on a wide range of topics uh, that we have. We created one on state spending and corrections and education. That was a popular one. Uh, you see inventions at a glance. But this one here on um, community college enrollments. So what this provides is um, California Community College enrollments. And we present the data three different ways. So over here with this stacked bar chart, uh, it presents enrollments by community college. So you can see some of the top feeder schools. So Santa Monica College, Diablo Valley, De Anza. For those of you in admissions, these are familiar names. Uh, we also present the data by campus. So you can look for um, fall 2014, the number of community college students that went to each of the campuses. And then we present it in, uh, the, in a, along a map uh, where the size of the circle represents the enrollment. The, co the color of the circle represents the primary campus that those students go to. Um, and this is a place, again, the data goes from 2014 back to 1994, so a lot of trend data that's in there that you can go in and look at. Uh, but it's all interactive. Um, and so it's a spot where we could go in and we could focus on uh, UC Berkeley and then see what the top feeder institutions are for that and how that changes, uh, or other institutions like Merced. 
um, and where, the, where they primarily pull. And so in many cases, what we find is like uh, community colleges that are closely located are ones where they go, but it's not always the case. And this uh, tool was used by our academic senate when they were having some of these discussions they're having on transfer pathways as a way to demonstrate why having consistency is important because we're pulling from students across the state, even though we know that we, we primarily get them from a few of the main ones. So that's another um, piece that we've got in here that demonstrates what we're trying to do in the, um, uh, the dashboard section. The last one I'll show you is a, one of the storyboards that we've got. Uh, and this one is focusing on undergraduate <coughs> outcomes. Uh, this, again, is a way where we've got a collection of um, dashboards that we have. And we have a primary takeaway at the top uh, that helps frame the data that's in there. And then people can go in and look and explore. Um, so what this shows here is that the number of bachelor's degrees at the University of California has grown over time. Uh, we present this information um, as a total. We present it by discipline. So you can see where we prim primarily provide awards. Uh, you can look at the data by campus. And so you can look at some of the changes that have uh, occurred um, over time and uh, what it looks like for Berkeley versus what it looks like for Merced. And it just gives us a way to present that information. Degrees awarded used to be the primary way that we would talk about outcomes. Um, that was the contribution that we'd end up uh, making. And with some of the challenges we've got with data, it was one of our, our better sources. But recently, we've been able to get in, uh, data from the California Employment Development Department. Um, and that allows us to tie uh, our graduates into the state workforce roles. Um, it's not perfect, but it does begin to give us a way to talk about uh, the contributions that we make for, for um, students that graduate and go on to work in California. This one here, which we pointed out in the accountability report, shows within two years about 70%, this is the yellow line that we've got here, of our graduates match this data source, um, which isn't an employment rate in the state, but, but it shows at least we know those ones are the ones that are ending up working uh, in the state. We can look at it by residency, so we can look at how that varies for California residents or what it looks like for domestic uh, non-residents. So within that, we have about 50% that stay within the state of California. But again, it gives us a way to go in and, and take a look at that. Uh, I like to think of it as a match rate for the data set. Um, this then focuses on uh, employment uh, industries uh, within the state of California. And we've presented it two ways. One is a lovely, um, uh, we're going to make t-shirts of these. It's, it's uh, very colorful. And then the other one is uh, an easier way to see what the trends are over time. But these are the different industries uh, that we've got. Um, and it shows uh, over time a decrease in the number of students that end up working in retail and wholesale growth for our graduates in uh, healthcare, um, K through 12. In fact, we have quite a significant proportion in there, uh, and uh, other industries. Um, so again, another way where we talk about contributions, we can change this by uh, discipline, and then you can see what some of the differences are uh, within there. Uh, and then we go into earnings, which is the primary reason we were given this data, which was to tell people how much they can make. Uh, the piece that we wanted to be able to show, and a lot of these things like pay scale or other things that go out, they'll take a point in time and they'll talk about how much you end up making in different uh, um, fields. And so what we wanted to do was to be able to start to talk about trajectory. Uh, and overall, what we find is that um, our uh, graduates go on and they double their earnings between two and 10 years. Uh, so that's our primary takeaway that we have at the top. Uh, and what you're able to do here is to take a look at differences by um, individual uh, major um, and see what that looks like for um, uh, different fields. And you can see the differences in trajectory that, that exist within there. And then the last thing that we have here is a link to other resources. I mean, by far, uh, one of the areas where we're providing a lot of information is about the value of a college degree. So if none of those there worked on helping demonstrate the role that we're playing in graduating these students and getting them to work in the state and uh, contributing to industries, we also have these other research studies that have been done that really talk about some of the um, 
economic contributions that we're making that our graduates make and that we, some of the reasons we believe that uh, investing in higher education, investing in higher education at the University of California is really, really important and critical. So maybe what I'll do is I'll stop there and open it up and see if there are any questions or comments. Uh, I've got my team here that are taking notes if we've got feedback. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, so on their face, these reports provide substantive data. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, it's being recorded. So let's. Okay. Yeah, please. Well, we have to turn it on. Are we on? Yes. Yeah, that okay. sounds good. Um, on their face, these reports um, substantiate um, and quantify the value that we have to the state and the econo economic value, the impact that we have. But in the eight years we've been producing these reports, our state investment has actually gone down. So what are the strategies at Office of the President to use this data in yeah. a way that the legislators don't say we're able to do all this in spite of their disinvestment, but rather that they need to make even greater investment. Right. So, you know, I, I think we're, we're taking multiple approaches. What, I think what, one of the strategies that we've got is to focus on common ground, uh, places where we have um, issues that we both want to work on. Uh, so one example that we've got, again, was that conference that occurred uh, yesterday down in Southern California focusing on climate change and the role that UC Research is providing. We invited the governor's office to participate in that discussion. And part of that is a way where we can really um, uh, work with them uh, and partner with them and demonstrate how the University of California can be uh, an asset. So we are using that as, as one of the strategies that we've got. Uh, we were um, buddies with the uh, state of California over the last year, providing them a significant amount of information about the University of California. Uh, and we have a significant amount of work where we're going to be leveraging um, specific things that UC campuses are doing across the system now to try to continue to make some of the improvements that we have. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, the conversation that we have, um, we do it several different ways. We use several different tools. Part of what our hope in providing this kind of information is that sometimes the University of California advocating for the University of California isn't as strong as when groups like the Campaign for College Opportunity or Public Policy Institute of California go out and advocate for the role. I mean, PPIC has been talking about the need for one million bachelor's degrees. And giving them access to this site and this kind of information is a way that we're hoping they're going to leverage it and infuse this in the research to say, look at the graduation rates that you've got if you want to think about bang for the buck. So we are thinking about different ways and for sure getting more and more information out there so that parents and students and um, uh, you know, outside groups can have the same kind of conversations that we've been having with the state. And our hope is in liberating the data uh, that um, we, uh, we have a lot of different voices out there that are, are talking about it. And I think we're starting to see some, some shifts, and I'm, I'm hopeful for the future. Hope is my middle name, though. Thank you. Is it on? Okay. It is. Hey, David. Uh, hi. How and, um, and or if um, do you present uh, data where or statistics where the University of California doesn't look so great? Mm-hmm. Now, what would that be? <laughs> yeah. I never thought of anything. But. Exactly. Uh, well, so again, we think about who the audiences are. I mean, I, one of the things that we did within our office was we um, provided research about graduation rates. A lot of times at the system level, we'll present it uh, at a system level. This is one place where we're starting to provide more data at the campus level. But when we looked at uh, grad rates um, and some of the factors that are there, we have differences between campuses. Uh, we have different gaps between different groups. Um, and we use that as a, a way to have an internal discussion. Um, and we had a conference back in January where we brought people together, uh, talked about um, best practices, ways that campuses were working on it. So that's a place where some of the data that we show you at the top 
that we present shows improvements, but there are definitely gaps. And when we look at it by campuses, there are different numbers that you, you see within there. Uh, so um, while I see some improvements, I, I like to think of them as rooms for improvement. Um, but that's a, a place where uh, we're likely going to produce the data, share it internally, have a conversation among the campuses. I think we learn best from one another about how to use it. Uh, but there'll be some other places where we'll show it as a challenge that we're presenting to the state. So it, it's, it's a, you know, there, it, the purpose varies, I guess. Um, but we are trying to use it for both. But for sure, some of these will be more positive than others. Hi. Hey. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that there is this increased focus on the policy implications of this data, which I think is extremely useful. Um, and I'm wondering if there are additional areas that you feel you hope you will get into or worries about m misunderstanding of the data. Yeah. And as you were talking, a, a couple of things came to my mind. These are long-standing issues. Uh, one is understanding the role of graduate education and graduate students. So for instance, you talked about the workforce for graduates. Right. And I assume, unless you've taken them out, those are only people with bachelor's degrees, but large segments of our students go on for graduate degrees. So it's not a problem right. that they're not right in the workforce, they're, that they're continuing their education. So that's one area. And the other is arts and humanities. We yeah. have so much wonderful focus on STEM, yeah. but how do we, ongoing challenge, how do we get attention of legislators and other policymakers to the value of humanities and arts and right. non-STEM. Yeah. Uh, so we do ha present some information uh, in the accountability report that talks about graduate education and the contributions it provides into the state. Um, it's true we, that population sometimes uh, it is a little bit more mobile. Uh, so there'll be some differences there. So, but we do work on uh, that. It and it's uh, also true. A lot of the focus is often on undergraduates and STEM. So those those are for sure there. Uh, we are uh, continually working on trying to think about ways to improve the way that we present this information. Um, and arts and humanities is one of those. So with that, we when we had the discussions with the state of California, we were presenting. Um, some of the roles, and in, in that case in particular, when we talked about uh, research and the contributions for carbon neutrality, we wanted to pull out examples that might not have stood out that were in humanities fields and, um, uh, and in social sciences as a way to, to talk about it. But the, our data is not super great. We, we've been adding in more information on pub publications in some places, and that gives us some spots where we're able to do it. Uh, but we're also extremely open on uh, other suggestions and ideas on where we can strengthen the kind of data and the way that we do it. I'll say we're trying a variety of different things, stories with the images, the data that we end up having, uh, responses from graduates, different ways to try to be as comprehensive, uh, but there are areas where we can make improvements. Oh, thanks. Um, the accountability report was started uh, by President Yudoff yes. uh, during his administration. What kinds of changes has um, President Napolitano uh, instituted and impl implemented, both in terms of the content of the report and in terms of the usability of it? Yeah. So I think the Information Center is one example. I mean, it's uh, great to give the, um, the president any data. She uses it. In fact, uh, I was at a talk that she gave uh, with the public policy school, and I was checking off the stats that she um, used. And so she leverages this, and she uses this as part of her uh, effort to demonstrate um, when uh, there are stories out there that we're not being transparent that we are. Um, she thinks the report is extensive. I tried to frame it like Goldfinch, uh, and that didn't work. So then we um, talked about different ways that we could uh, get this information out. And I think it is thinking about audiences and ways to communicate information. The executive summary is 
one way where we tried to take some of the real key takeaways so that you'd have an overarching story that would talk about the depth and breadth of the system. So that's one place. Um, and then the info center is another way that we're doing it. Uh, and um, I would say having that as a resource, one of the biggest things that the president is pushing is to try to get consistency. Uh, and so for us to be able to use that as the first place that media relations goes, that others in the office go, that the speechwriters go, is at least uh, allowing us to focus on what the story is instead of why is this number different. So those might be some of the things that are in there um, which demonstrate some use that uh, is uh, out there. She is very interested in content. Uh, and so it's very lucky for us uh, that we've got it <laughs> and, um, so, uh, and that we're, we're uh, able to provide it. And there are places where she's pressing us to try to get better and better uh, um, data. And I think research is one area that we're looking at other options that give her a way to really talk about uh, the impact that we have um, beyond just uh, expenditures and awards. So I see Mark in the back too. I want to make. I know he's been raising his hand for a bit. I yield. He, and then we go back to Amber. I know. No. Oh no. Oh no, Amber. Time. Pamela, I want to go back to the first question you got and press just a little bit. If I were a politician listening to your presentation, I would conclude that the last thing we want to do is raise tuition in the UC system because we're doing such a great job and we have all of these students from disadvantaged backgrounds and we don't want to hurt them. But the story that you and uh, Chancellor Bergeno and company uh, let us all know about for a long time was that the return to aid system in UC is such that it, tuitions effectively soak the rich policy that and holding tuition without increases hurts the quality of education for lower income students while raising tuition basically allows the families who are easily able to afford higher tuition to help pay for it. And I didn't see a slide <laughs> that addresses that. And it's, a, it's an important story that our governor doesn't seem to understand. Um, and it seems to be a hard sell, but it, it's, it's discouraging because it's you know, ultimately, you know, indefinite freeze on tuition yeah. damages the very students that these people think they're trying to help by freezing right. tuition. Where is that story? Right. Well, so this is uh, one piece of the story that we talk about. And uh, so this is the focus that we've got, just to make sure I'm going to hit this right, um, about uh, the importance of tuition and what that does to providing us uh, expanded uh, access. Um, so this one here, uh, this is the affordability store storyboard that we've got. And what we've basically done is gone through to talk about sticker price or total cost and then what net cost looks like and how that varies by um, different uh, income groups, family income groups. And so what you can see is over this period of time, even when tuition had gone up, the cost for uh, undergraduates at the lower income level has actually gone down, right? And uh, you know we are starting to look at some of the middle income uh, family groups as as uh, an area that we we want to be able to look at. Um, I what we've uh, been able to work out with the governor's office is that while tuition is going to remain flat for the next couple years, we're going to build in predictable increases over time. Uh, and so that is definitely part of the work that we've done and part of the agreement that was made when we had the, the budget uh, negotiations this year. Um, it was just a very hot political topic uh, for sure last year. Um, and so the focus is for the next two to keep that flat. But this was part of the data that we wanted to be able to show that as we were increasing uh, the tuition over this time period, which was definitely going on, um, this was the effect that it had. And when we think about our lower income students, those were not the ones that were um, ending up paying uh, more. Um, so that's for sure one of the ways that we're doing it. And then we go in and we talk about what debt levels look like and we're keeping an eye on that. Um, uh, but, but that's one, one, one part of the way that we're trying to tell that story. Oh, sorry. Okay. I just wanted to thank you. Um, you know, our local team has benefited greatly from sending the media to the info center. Just go to the info center. Don't bug us. Oh, I like that. Center. It's awesome. I really appreciate the tension um, that you guys, and I'd like to see how you guys are managing it between the tension of being transparent with data, 
but not losing control of your narrative. Right. And I really appreciate. I've seen. I've seen it develop. I've seen how you're doing that, and so I'm, I think it's yeah. really. It's a hard thing to do once it, you become transparent. You don't want to lose control of your narrative. So I really appreciate what yeah. you guys have built and how it's evolved. That's great. Thank you. And uh, this is like an open conversation, right? It's a, we're a public institution. Our group wants to be able, if you think of ways, other things that we could do that would improve the way that we tell the story that we've got, we'd be very, very interested in hearing that. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Um, so I want to follow up something with, that Mark was talking about, which is, do you have a section on sort of the unmet gaps that could, or the impact of state divestment in terms of, you know, we've had growth in a lot of areas, but we're still falling short of where we want to be mm -hmm. in terms of in many areas and how, like, is there a section on what we could do more with further investment in terms of, you know, we're, yeah, it's great that we're doing better than so many institutions in terms of low income students, but we're still not meeting all the need and there's unmet needs around meeting fees, but we're not meeting things like housing, we're not meeting things like food security, um, healthcare, things like that. Um, are there ways that we can use this to, to push for the places where we're not doing as well as we want to be, but part of that is because we don't have support either because of explicit legislation like say Prop 209 mm -hmm. or because of divestment um, in terms of state funding. So uh, some of that information that we provide is often in uh, some of the topic briefs that we end up sharing, and we haven't necessarily integrated all of that in here. Uh, one of the things that we've put in the report in that same storyboard was uh, information about debt levels and the percent of students that are having to borrow. And so we're starting to see a little bit of an uptick there. Uh, when we look at our graduate programs and our graduate students and we look at the um, increasing debt level that they have in some areas, those are, are going up. And so we're trying to have a conversation with them about some of the costs that are in there uh, and need to provide additional support. Um, so I'll say we, we, we did a lot of work uh, last year presenting information that showed state disinvestment and showed uh, increases in um, high school uh, graduates. Uh, we also did it where we showed what the Department of Finance pr projected, which every year they projected that it was going down, and every year it went up. And so we created a graphic which showed a series, 10 series, and one on top of one another that showed Department of Finance says it's going down, 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 down. Every year it goes up, 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 up. They're telling you now it's going down. We're telling you it's going up. And we showed them information that was uh, graduation rates for um, uh, our high school graduates, and they weren't accounting for the growth and graduation rates for Latino students, which is the largest group that we've got. And, and so we've been using a lot of that to say these estimates that you have which helps suppress what we could consider as an investment are not right. Uh, and so that's one way where we're talking about there's capacity and need out there and uh, without the enrollment support, you know, we, we could provide more support for these students if we could do it. And then um, we've tried other ways to talk about disinvestment and some of the effects about, uh, again, um, individual students and the costs that they've got or the debt levels. There is a big focus. I mean, the campuses have been doing a lot to, to provide patching, to continue to provide as much support and services for, for students. So even through some of those really tough times, um, some of the measures don't come out as strong. Uh, so I'll say we've, we've shared data, not necessarily in this format, uh, as a way to talk about some of the effects that are there and the capacity and need. Um, and so we just think about which ones we end up putting in different places. Hi, thank you. This is great information and looking forward to reviewing it. Uh, qu quick question is, eventually will this data help answer questions about how this money, or whether it's through tuition or uh, federal aid, getting spent? and how it performs in the sense of 
taking that you know increase in tuition for example where is that increase going yeah are those programs or um, departments actually increasing um, quality or uh, results versus the ones that don't yeah <laughs> that'd be interesting yeah so it's uh, you know our our data systems are challenging at times and so the financial systems I've got Jim here those are challenging uh, for us to be able to show um, these funds are coming in and this is exactly where uh, they're going and in fact uh, university fund accounting is amazingly complicated and it makes it even more complicated for um, folks on the campus to spend funds that way. And I know there's a push to try to consolidate funds quite a bit uh, and uh, give more flexibility for funding. So it's actually often a challenge, though some would think it would be really easy for us to say, you've increased your student tuition uh, by this amount. Exactly where did those dollars go? Uh, because it comes in uh, to a general fund and then it gets spent out on a variety of um, places. Uh, but we do go through and we work with our campuses to try to pull that information out. So at a system level, it's not easy for us to do it uh, in a way where I think we can really tell the kind of story that we need to be able to tell, which would be you know, specifically what programs we're, we're getting a bump or not. We, we get the accounts and the funds and it's, it's just not as useful a story, though we are often asked about that. Um, and so that's one of the places where we end up partnering with uh, campus financial offices um, and uh, piecing together uh, information and then trying to take the data that we've got to talk about it in a way that's better. So I know your brief is you see clearly, um, but the genius of the master plan is the symbiosis among the different elements of higher education in California. And some of the most interesting questions are intersegmental yeah. questions. Right. And I wonder whether you could talk about um, how, how we might get better data to answer some of those questions. That's a hypothetical, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, we used to have CPEC, which uh, was an organization that collected all this information and allowed that um, kind of uh, data source to exist that would provide that kind of review. Uh, the governor vetoed funding for that. Uh, and then um, the segment offices came together uh, with uh, the... Um, uh, K through 12 group and uh, also the group on uh, alumni, uh, out, uh, the California Employment Database Group, to try to work to construct something that would do that. Uh, that didn't uh, work, in part trying to figure out where it would be housed and all of that. And so instead, we set up an agreement that we would share data across the system. And we've done that. So when we were doing the budget negotiations over the last year, we worked with the California Community Colleges and the Cal State University on projections. And we shared the projections that we had on what we saw for high school graduates based off of the data that we could provide. We tried to look at what that would mean for capacity at the different institutions. And, but it's definitely Definitely on an ad hoc basis. Uh, so I know um, we are uh, working on some efforts to think about what it would take to reconstitute that and run it um, in a different way. And so that's that's uh, additional work that we're looking at and, and what that would take uh, to do it. But uh, I know there are groups that are interested in that. Um, uh, it would help us talk about uh, the need for the state as a whole. Uh, and so it, it is really um, thinking about what it would take to be able to do it, where it would get housed, and all those good things. Well, let's um, thank Pamela. And And I'd like to invite you all to a reception, which is right outside, and you can continue your our conversation with Pamela. In the, in, in the reception, during the reception. Thank you.